kids, it's Mrs. S. Jardins. I am back for story time. And our book today is called Radio Man. That ties in with our road study. Now remember, this is the front cover of the book. This is the back cover of the book. And this is the spine. Now on the front here, it says Arthur Dorios. So that is the author of the book. Okay, let's read. I'm going to move my computer so you guys can see the pictures. Diego woke up to sounds of a deep voice on the radio. Buenos dias, good morning. The words in Spanish and English echoed across the room. Esta es la voz de la frontera. This is the voice of the border. Good morning, Texans. Estas listo? <clears throat> asked Diego's grandfather, Abuelo. I'm ready, said Diego. Beep, beep. A truck, truck's horn sounded outside. Diego's mother, father, and little sister, Alicia, were ready, already waiting in the front seat of the truck. Diego carried the radio and climbed into the truck. Hey, Radio Man, called Diego's friend David. David called him Radio Man because Diego was always listening to the radio. Can I ride with you today? Si, sí, vamos, said Papa, waving. Yes, let's go, said Diego. We won't see each other for a while. My family's leaving here tomorrow. So is my family, said David. Diego's family and David's family were migrant farm workers. They traveled most of each year to find work picking fruits and vegetables. This was the last day of cabbage picking. It was dusty and hot in the fields. The boxes of cabbages seemed heavy. Como elefantes, said Abuelo. Diego and David thought the boxes were heavy as elephants, too. While they rode back to the cabins, Diego turned the radio to a station that played songs in Spanish. Everyone was tired from the work. Canta, said Mama. Diego sang. David tapped a rhythm on the side of the truck, and Mama helped Alicia clap hands in time to the music. The next morning, Diego and David said goodbye. They hoped they would see each other soon. Diego waved until David was out of sight. Diego and his family drove west over the mountains. You're listening to KKTS Cactus Radio, broadcasting from Tucson, Saguaro Cactus Land, said a man's voice on the radio that night. This is the After Sundown Show, and I'm the Night Owl. On highways, on narrow roads, and through small towns, the family drove from farm to farm looking for work. Hello, you're, you're tuned to Bird Radio of Phoenix, Arizona. I'm talking to you from the banks of the Gila River. When the radio voice got louder and louder, Diego knew they were getting closer to a town. At the melon farm where his family found work, Diego saw his cousins Sophie and Ernesto. Their family had also found work here. He hadn't seen these cousins in a long time. The three walked to school together every morning. When they went back to the fields after school, they looked for gila monsters. Once David had told Diego about gilas, but Diego had never seen one. There's a gila, said Diego on the last day of picking. It looks like one of your dinosaurs, Ernesto, said Sophie. <clears throat> that night, there was a party with music, food, and a piñata to celebrate the end of melon picking. Bailamos, said Abuelo, and people danced to music from the radio. Sophie broke the piñata. 
I didn't think you could run so fast, Diego said to Ernesto. You look like you're being chased by Gila's, said Ernesto. The next day, Diego's family started the long drive to the cherry farms. It was hot in the truck during the day, so the family drove through the cool night. Diego was almost asleep, leaning against Abuelo, when Abuelo jiggled his arm. Escucha, he said. Diego listened to crackling sounds coming from the radio. Abuelo turned the radio slowly. Buenas noches. The voice spoke only in Spanish. The songs were in Spanish, too. Abuelo heard one of his favorite songs, La Paloma. He told Diego that this station was far, far away in Mexico. Abuelo had listened to the same song in the village where he grew up. He told Diego about that village, about the forest where butterflies look like leaves on trees, about the houses shining in the moonlight. By dawn, the family was near Lodi, California. Good morning, everyone, said the radio woman's voice. She played a song called Stuck in Lodi again. Diego had heard that song every summer when he and his family came to Lodi to pick cherries. But Diego never felt stuck in Lodi. He always met someone he knew. Maybe David would be there. Diego saw two boys he had known at school in Arizona, but he did not find David. While he emptied buckets of cherries and took care of Alicia, Diego looked for his friend. During all the days of cherry picking, he looked, but David did not arrive. Today is the last day of cherry picking, the woman on the radio said. It's been a great harvest this year. We'll go north to new places, said Papa. Papa drove until fog swirled around the truck. Diego heard the ocean waves crashing. You're listening to big radio in Crescent City, gateway to the giants, the radio man said. The giants were redwood trees. One tree had a tunnel big enough to drive through. I'll tell David about this, said Diego. Isn't that cool? Car is going right through the tree because there's a tunnel built right through it. The family drove through forests and through dry country. They stopped at a roadside store to get something to drink and eat. A woman was looking at melons, trying to find a ripe one to buy. Diego wondered if those were melons he and his family had picked. He looked at the towns of fruits and vegetables. He knew how to pick them. Finally, the family reached orchards of trees so heavy with apples that the branches almost touched the ground. Diego had never been here before. Ahora, anuncios de KMPO, Campo Radio, Campesina de Sunnyside, Washington. Now announcements from KMPO, Campo from Farm Workers Radio from Sunnyside, Washington. The radio announcer gave a telephone number so that people could call in and give their messages. Diego turned up the volume. Paco, this is Lupe. Feliz cumpleaños. Happy birthday. Elena, your cousin called. She will arrive on Friday. Diego listened to the messages and to the KMPO telephone number again. He ran to a telephone and called the station. The announcer answered. Buenos dias. Do you have a message? Diego did have a message. Hello, David. This is Diego. Are you here? Diego heard his own voice on the radio. Someone was listening. So that was our story, Radio Man. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye for now. I'll be back with another story time soon.